Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free a certification training course. This module talks about the human component of communication. And that's a human component. If you thought this training course was going to be all about printers and PCs and technical things, you may find that this is a little bit different. And that's because CompTIA added this to the a certification in this latest iteration. There's an entire category on communication and professionalism. And that's because as technical people, when we're solving problems, we're oftentimes solving problems and working with other people to solve those problems. So it's very important that we understand the best way to communicate and the best way to be professional when we're trying to solve these particular issues. This is directly from the CompTIA exam objectives, which is to use good communication skills, listening, discretion, and communicating, especially when working with customers and colleagues. So it's incredibly important. You're going to find a lot of questions on the exam are asking you how you would react in certain situations, what you would say, or what you would do given a certain set of circumstances. It's very interesting what you're going to find when you start looking at that exam. So in this module, we're going to talk specifically about communication skills. And the communication skill part of it from a troubleshooting perspective is incredibly valuable. The better communicator you are, the better your reasoning process with the end user is going to be because you can start asking questions and communicating with them in ways that you would not have had available. And this is oftentimes a bit of a challenge. These are difficult skills to try to figure out how do I communicate with someone? How do I connect with them? What's the best way to talk with them in ways that will help them solve their problems? If you're able to become a very skilled communicator, you're going to find that those skills are very marketable because they, they really go outside the realm of just an A plus certification or working technically. When you're communicating with people on the street, when you're ordering lunch, when you're in an interview, you're going to find that these communication skills become very, very valuable, not just to you, but to prospective employers. You're going to be surprised what you learn also when you start communicating with people. You start talking to them about uh, things you see on their desk. Oh, I see a picture here of a race car. You're into racing. They start talking to you about racing. And suddenly, the, the communication becomes more of a friendly one where you're now shifting this into things. And, and they're able to communicate with you more naturally and tell you things perhaps they would not have told you if it was a completely different relationship you had built with them. One of the most important skills you're going to want to learn as a technical person who's trying to resolve these problems is to avoid interrupting someone when they're explaining to you what the problems might be. Oftentimes, we have this need whenever somebody's explaining to us the particular problem they're having, we want to jump in. We happen to know the answer. So let's, let's solve it right here. We know what the issue happens to be. We do this because we want to solve the problem quickly. We have this need to resolve that issue as quickly as possible. And sometimes we want to show the other person that we're very smart about what we're doing. We're very, we've been trained. We've been in this situation before. We're experienced with what we're doing. And we want to prove to them that, yes, we're smart and we can solve this problem for you very quickly. But oftentimes, the listening process is one that allows us to build a relationship with our customer. They're going to need help from you again someday. And if you came off the first time as somebody who interrupted them before they were even able to say what the problem was, they're not going to come back to you to solve that particular problem. What you're going to also find is this process of someone telling you the issue Oftentimes, they'll tell you a key piece of information. Wouldn't it be horrible if they were starting the process of telling you and you interrupted them, you know what the problem was, you take the system away from them, you go into the back room to try to solve it, and you can't fix it. What you thought the problem was wasn't really the issue. And had you stopped and listened, you would have had a, a key piece of information that they might be able to provide for you. This is really useful on the phone, too, because there you don't have a way to look into someone's eyes. You don't have a way to see their body and how their, their mannerisms are. And over the phone, being able to listen to what they're saying and ask questions of what they're doing and not interrupting them when they're in that process 
oftentimes gives you a lot of information you're able to use afterwards. Now, this skill, perhaps more than any other, takes a lot of time to perfect. You want to be able to listen and, and catch yourself before you start interrupting. Maybe even prompt yourself by putting yourself on mute if you're on the telephone. Let them completely finish what they're doing. And the better you are at this process, you're going to find the more time you're able to save later because you have every single piece of information that you would have needed to solve this particular problem. As you're listening and the customer's telling you about this problem they're having, you're going to probably have some questions you want to ask. You want to ask very pertinent questions to what they're hearing. Drill down into some of the details. Oh, you're having a particular problem with this. Uh, what message was on the screen? Did you see other errors crop up at the same time? Oh, you're having a problem with the hard drive. Are you hearing any strange, strange problems, strange noises coming from the hard drive? Are there other things happening with that system that you've had in the past? And those will often allow you to discount other problems you may be thinking about. So asking questions and drilling down into those pieces can really give you a lot of great intelligence. Often you'll find yourself in the best possible situation repeating back to the customer what they've already said. Uh, let me make sure I understand this correctly. What you're saying is that whenever you start this prob this particular application up, you're getting this particular kind of error. Do I understand that properly? And by doing that, you're now on the same level with them. You not only understand completely and are asking for clarification that you understand completely, but now the customer recognizes that you are listening to them, and they now understand that you know exactly what they know about the problem that they were having. That becomes very useful later if you need to go back back to the end user and say, I need more information. They know there's someone there that you, they can trust you. And they can really tell you a lot about what the problems might be. It's also is an opportunity for you to fix any problems you might have misunderstood. The customer can tell you, no, it wasn't exactly what you said. It was this particular kind of issue. And you can make revise the notes that you've made, make sure that you are able to understand that completely. Now, keep an open mind when going through this clarification process as well. The issue may seem completely obvious, and it may seem one of those situations where you want to interrupt and just solve the problem completely. But don't make assumptions. Always ask clarifying questions so that you're able to make sure it's not something that, that it otherwise could be. If somebody's having a problem that seems like a hard drive problem, Ask the questions about, do you hear noise? Do you smell anything? So oftentimes, these electronic components will let off smoke, and you'll know that something has failed. Did you smell any smoke? Did you see any smoke? Were there any sparks? Those types of problems are interesting to go through. With software, it's even more interesting because you can start asking questions. Or uh, Are other problems happening with other applications? Are you still able to print OK? And so those other types of clarifying problems allow you to step through all of the obvious pieces and solve the problem quickly. Another thing that's useful is to avoid jargon. And this is a problem we have in our particular industry. These abbreviations and TLAs, three-letter acronyms, are things that you just can't avoid. Because as you go through this A-plus certification, there are going to be a lot of jargon, jargons, a lot of different acronyms, a lot of different abbreviations. What you want to do is avoid using those abbreviations with the end user. You want to be the translator. And instead of telling them that your problem may be associated with a particular very technical piece of information, you can just t say, I think your problem is associated with the storage component. We may need to swap out your storage component. Not swap out your RAM, not swap out the DIM, not swap out all of those other pieces. Just say this might be associated with this problem. In the end, the, the end user just wants the problem resolved and wants a general idea of what you might be doing to resolve the issue. If you're able to communicate in these terms that everybody can understand, it's a normal communication. Everybody's at ease, and there's not a lot of doubt as to where the problem is and what you will be doing to resolve the problem. And that makes everybody comfortable with the process. When you're making decisions now, about what you're going to do. And those decisions are going to be based on what you're telling someone. You want to be sure they understand exactly what you're saying. Now, these are oftentimes, with jargon, the easiest problems to avoid. Unlike the interruption problem that took me a long time to get through, avoiding jargon is very easy. Oftentimes, you talk to somebody like you're talking to a family member. 
to, to this day, I, I work with very technical networking components, very technical security pieces. And when my family asks me, what do you do? Well, I work with computers and I work with security. I work with networks. There's no reason to go into the details of what types of jargonized types of Ethernet networks and security components I might be dealing with. Instead, you keep it very high level and very upfront. And by that, by doing that, you're now able to avoid a lot of problems. And it's very easy once you start doing that particular piece of it. To review these communication skills, make sure you listen. Make sure you avoid interrupting when the customers are talking with you. Always ask clarifying questions when somebody's talking about the problems they're having so that you're able to understand more about the types of issues they have. And always avoid using jargon when dealing with your customers and your end users. Put everybody at ease. Make sure those acronyms are left off to the side and you're dealing with people as people as a person and not as some technical component for more a plus videos for a lot more free training resources all of our community resources that we have out there on our message boards be sure to visit our website at freeaplus.com